Hi, this is Simon, and I'm going to go through the seven biggest mistakes when changing an electrical plug. So, first up is the fuse size. Quite often when I or other electricians go to an inspection, you, are, you find, or pap testing as well, you find that the fuse sizes are too big, which even though you might think that is less likely to blow, so you've got you haven't got the inconvenience. It's actually a dangerous thing to put a fuse size too large in there for what it's powering. And also, so the fuse size is both for the cable and to protect the device on the end. It should all be worked out properly. Uh, you can have two smaller fuse, which obviously is going to give you problems as well. So the right size fuse is number one. The second thing is the cable size. So if it's too big, it's not so much a problem, but it might be hard to connect in. If it's too small, that's a problem again. That is an overheating hazard. Uh, if the cable is too small, it will just overheat internally as you use it. The third thing is not connecting the earth, especially if it needs it on the other end and it's a metal type of appliance that requires an earth. Now, not all metal appliances need an earth, but the majority do. Again, that's down, an electrician would be able to advise whether it needs it or not. But if you're not connecting the earth and you want to use two core cable when it should be three, then if that goes live, you're not protected back at the plug, which then doesn't protect you back to your fuses, breakers, or RCD back at the board. So that's a shock hazard basically. The next thing is making it off too short. So that's whether the cable is too short inside and tugging at the connector or whether it's actually too short where it connects on the screw and maybe it's even connected on the insulation and not really connected pr properly and thoroughly. Number five is you could have it too long. So it could be so long that the conductors are stripped back too long with a hazard of catching another terminal. The, it's just so long that it's a bit of a spaghetti mess and it could catch inside. It's not ideal. Or it could be too long that it actually comes out the end so that outer insulation is not protected inside of the cord grip. Uh, and that can cause problems as well, especially if it comes out while it's plugged in. Number six is it could be frayed at the end. So where you're tightening it up, because it's a flexible cable, which it should always be on a plug pretty much, um, it could, if, you're, if it's not twisted properly and all of the cores aren't under that screw tightly, then that's going to, give you a smaller diameter which is another overheating hazard and the problem with overheating and plugs is that you don't actually know until it gets worse and worse and worse you don't necessarily smell it straight away or see it straight away it often st starts to burn first on the flat face that is in the socket and so it'll end up stuck on or something like that or it might trip first if you've got modern RCDs if you haven't, if it's old fuses, you might not even get that. It just might actually burn out. And, and you would see it on the back of the plug then. So this is all critical. So it's not just as simple as just swapping over, getting the cables right. There's a lot more to it. And a lot of these things are not made up. They're actually things that I find a lot during inspections. So what's the final one? What's the seventh one? The seventh one as daft as it sounds, is using an old worn plug. So with a new plug, it's all nice and shiny. And assuming that the socket is good as well, and I'll cover sockets in another video, so make sure that you, you know, keep in touch with what I'm doing and sign up and whatever. But if it's not shiny copper, basically, going into a new tight connection on a plug, on the socket rather, that's going to make a really good connection. 
sockets actually wear the springiness over time might wear. So when your socket it starts to feel loose with a plug-in, that is putting it under a bit more, uh, it, it's not a perfect contact and so you can get overheating in the same way that a loose connection in the back of the plug under the screw can also cause the same. So you can't necessarily just clean it up either. It's better to make sure that it's a good new one and also check those sockets, make sure they're not too loose. So seven things there that can go wrong with plugs and there's more, but that's the more common ones that I have seen. And I will have been putting some photos up during this so you can see the sort of things that I have spotted. They're actually my photos. So if there's any comments, pop them below. If there's anything else that you'd like to know about, also put that on the comments as well, and I'll consider doing that in a future video. So I'll keep watching. See you soon. Bye for now.